Hey, welcome back everybody. Today we're going to do another video. I've had requests to do um, trees. Uh, apparently some people have uh, difficulty with trees or how to get started with painting trees. So I decided to do this little landscape for you guys. And it's like a little English country uh, landscape. So I'm going to show you the picture that I have for you. There you go. This is what we're going to do. Okay, so now the basic thing, uh, you know that I paint in impressionistic style if you're new to my channel. So uh, I'm going to show you how to break down this whole entire scene. Excuse me for the backlighting. Boom. There you go. Done. Um, <coughs> I'm going to show you how to break down the scene on how to shape the trees and uh, to work out the landscape here. All right, so when you're painting an impressionistic style, uh, it's all about capturing the moment very quickly. All right, we're not about details. We're not about, uh, you know, getting nitpicky and putting everything that we see in the scene. It's just about the essentials of the scene, what's important in the scene, and what you're trying to convey in the scene, okay? So uh, I'm gonna show you that, and I'm gonna try to break this down for you guys in the simplest terms, and to get you going, even if you're brand new painter, you can do this. So what we got here today is an 8x10. Now uh, you're probably wondering why I toned the canvas with this yellowish color. That's a yellow ochre. Uh, because I want to have this golden undertone um, background base color okay just to give that warmth I could have gone probably burnt <clears throat> burnt umber or burnt sienna but I just chose this uh, this yellow ochre we'll see how it works out it may or may not work out for me but you know so I'm using also golden open acrylics there you go all right and um, the reason I'm using that is just to show you is that the demonstration um, what's nice is like if you live in a nice hot subtropical country or state they are nice to paint outside with to do uh, your your painting uh, as opposed to oils well I mean it's nice to work with oils it, it really has a lot of benefits but these dry very slowly as opposed to regular acrylics and they feel like oils and the trick to golden open is to use them nice and thick all right and to do that the perfect brush that I find to work with these golden uh, acrylics are these Princeton catalyst brushes okay they're Princeton catalyst uh, poly tips and they're beautiful to work with they hold just enough water and uh, bristles just damp enough to move the paint nicely and you will see that as, as I demonstrate so they'll be my predominant brushes other brushes I'll be using are these little cheapy brushes, uh, these um, Royal Lang Nickel, Royal Lang Nickel, uh, the Z series, the Zen series, okay? They're nice to make like sharp lines and stuff like that. And of course, maybe a fan brush if necessary. Uh, this one is a Royal Lang Nickel as well. Uh, I don't know, uh, the Aura, Aura brand. Not that it really matters, but but the whole gist of this painting basically is to show you how to paint impressionistically fast and easily. Uh, also, uh, if you want any of the materials that I'm using here today, link in the description. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. That does help me out. All right, without further ado, let's start. So I'm going to start breaking this down. I'm going to probably use, let's see, a burnt sienna to draw out this thing. So basically, I'm going to look, I'm just going to make basic shapes, okay? So I know I have this field going about like this, goes up, and then goes to this background here, the horizon's about... right 
here, it's always important to establish your horizon. Actually, my horizon's prop, perhaps a little bit lower, but let me see. We have all these bushes that come to here. And then the tree, just the basic shape of the tree. quickly outline that's it that's all I'm gonna need for a drawing because this tree is gonna be painted in one big mass okay so as we go along I will explain to you more of what's going on so to start I'm gonna start with uh, painting all um, the mass, the masses first. I want to cover the whole entire canvas first so that I'll be able to better judge the colors that I'm going to need. So what's more important right now is the values of how dark or how light something is or the subject is, right? To differentiate bef between foreground, background, and what have you. Now, colors is a second next thing that I'm going to be focusing on. Now I'm not going to get the the right colors right off the bat. I'm just going to get approximate colors. All right, the approximate, close enough. All right. And then after that, I will start putting, you know, try to, um, I should I say, guess about what the right colors are as, you know, uh, I put in these mid-tone colors and the approximate uh, colors as the, my base. So, this all sounds like jibber jabber for right now until I get to the actual painting. But just I want to explain to you ahead of time so you know what to expect, what's coming. And you're not going to wonder, well, why did he do this? All right. Time to start. Okay. So now I got these darks here that we're going to start. And you know, I'm going to show you the, pic the painting, the picture intermittently. So I'm going to start with these bushes here. Okay. I'm probably going to start like one not so much homogeneous color but like a mixture of colors and i'm going to show you this on the palette and then this is going to be the same thing one big mass color i'm going to do and then poke all these holes in there all right and then same thing for the rest so here we go so i'm going to take i see a lot of red there i see burnt sienna maybe a little bit of red and a little bit of ultramarine blue. Okay, so now I'm just, see that just plopping these colors in there like this. As well, I'll be putting in some more, adding some other colors into this mix. Okay, so now, my usual colors, I, I did not name my colors. I'm sorry, I should probably tell you the colors. I have cat, uh, Hansa Yellow, Hansa Yellow, uh, Nathal Red Light, which normally I use Ultra um, Alizarin Crimson, but I don't have Alizarin Crimson in my um, Golden Open. It's a color I need to get. So I'm just going to make do with whatever I have. And the, re the difference between that is that Alizarin Crimson is more of a transparent color versus the Nathal, which is more of a semi-opaque um, color. And I really don't want to start with opaque colors. You want to start with transparent colors or semi-transparent colors because the colors are richer, deeper, okay? And they make nice darks and so on, so on and so forth. So Hansa Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Ultramarine Blue, Prussian Blue, Sap Green, I usually don't use it, but 
I have it and I want to use the tube away instead of waste it. Uh, sap grains, uh, burnt sienna and titanium white. So back to to this here. So let me do this, more burnt sienna. And what I like about these acrylic paints is that they dry fast just enough for you to put another layer of paint on there quickly enough. Let me add some perhaps yellow. Right there in that muddy color, that's not a problem. Just wherever you see some of these colors popping out, I'm not too too concerned about. Uh, maybe a little bit of that Prussian blue, yellow. And the scene looks fairly dark for now. Okay, so now same thing on this side. If you feel like your paints are dragging and a little bit sticky, just add more, a little bit of water. You don't need very much water, just letting you know that, especially with Golden Open. You don't need very much water, just, just enough. As you can see, the, the paint sags because there's enough fluid content in there too. all these colors with a little bit of titanium white just to gray it out and then we'll add more colors to them eventually but I just want this grayish because this is further back so there's gonna be more under bluish tones right just like that I'm not too concerned about what it looks like for now. We could fix that later, it's not a problem. Remember, when you're painting impressionistic, you're not worried about details, all right? Keep that in mind. And this, eventually, I will make uh, a little bit darker, okay? It looks pretty transparent now. It's just like with oils, when you do your wash, the colors are usually a little bit transparent when you put in your, right off the bat. So you usually go back over it with uh, another layer which is going to be darker which I will demonstrate soon enough for you so now let me work on the tree the tree I see a lot of burnt sienna maybe some yellow right uh, let me see what else I see is that maybe a hint of ultramarine blue just to give it more of that brown color you see how that's done just like pretty quickly just mass mass color And you can see I'm not following the lines to a T there, right? Okay. There you go, one big mass, just like that. And I know there's some darks right here, the big main tree trunk, and we're gonna work on that in a second as well. You know what, uh, let me do that now. And notice I'm still using the same brush. I'm still using a number, this is a number six flat that I'm using. I haven't even changed anything yet. Number six flat. So we're gonna make this dark center here, uh, base of the, of the trunk. Ultramarine blue, let's put a little bit of red. Uh, let's put a little bit of burnt sienna. Let me, you know what, put some Prussian. Prussian is a really nice 
dark, dark blue. One more red. One more sienna. One more blue. All right. So I see the main tree trunk here. I see some darks here. I see a little bit of dark there. on this side shadow lines shadow colors and some of these trees I'm just putting approximate colors of what I see and this is gonna be darker in a few minutes you'll see you're wondering what these shadow lines are it's like okay so you have the top of the leaves and just the base of the leaves right the leaves are not into the they're not they're not in light are going to be a little bit darker right now you see this as a one whole big mass like oh this is like gibberish what's going on here you will see because eventually as i start painting the background i will start sculpting the tree and making these sky holes in here which will start defining the tree right then i'll be able to gauge how much darker the tree has to be or how much lighter it has to be and then afterwards I'll be able to tell how much darker some of these colors have to be that's why I said I have to cover the whole entire canvas first before I start doing anything else so basically the what I have here the values are like mid-tone like like a, a value of one is white a value of 10 is black right so I'm somewhere in between, like maybe between five to seven. I don't want too light and I don't want too dark right off the bat because I want to have this liberty of adding darks or lights without having too far, without going too far to an extreme on one end of the spectrum or the other, okay? So it's gonna to continue to make sense. Give, give, give it a chance and I will show you. Let me put some more hands of yellow up here. I wish I had a more opaque, like cad yellow, but when I bought these to experiment, I didn't think about all that. Anywho, so uh, let's start doing the grass. This hands of yellow, let's put some of this blue, uh, Prussian blue here, okay. Actually, maybe let me add a little bit of burnt sienna, more of this yellow, and a little bit more Prussian blue. You're probably wondering why I did the burnt sienna. That's because if I have to put any highlights, the highlights will show better over muted colors than just uh, than just. Uh, bright chromatic colors all right so that's the extent of that for now probably have to go a little bit darker And everything's going to come into focus afterward and start making sense to you. I'm just going by what I'm seeing, what's dark, what's light, and I'm just following shapes here. All right, now for the sky. So, let me just... Uh, I guess I could keep this on there. Look how much we've got done in 19 minutes. And if I wasn't talking, it would be even faster than that. But I'm just trying to show you step by step here. 
So now let's start working the sky. The sky I'm going to do use titanium white. Ooh, it's getting old. Now titanium white is getting old. So it's time to use these paints. Put a little bit of water to rehydrate this paint here. I'm going to use ultramarine blue, a little bit of red, a little bit of yellow ochre. See how that works. Yeah, that, that should work. Make down this gray down sky here. And I'm going to vary the colors. Like how much blue, how much red as I'm going along. See, I'm using this paint pretty nice and thick. Probably not here, I didn't do so, but I will in a second here. See, nice and thick. Stroke just to show some of these leaves here. So imagine you're out there plein air painting. Okay, so these paints are like really nice and uh, they apply very nicely with these Princeton brushes, I found out. So, so let me see. White, let me see a little bit of blue, maybe a little bit more yellow ochre, maybe a hint of red. Remember, I have to keep telling you, we're just trying to capture a scene here. Maybe a little bit of this Prussian blue. It's a nice cool blue. Let's see, maybe let's do more yellow ochre Add a little bit of warmth there in the sky. If you feel your paints are dragging a little bit, just, uh, just add a little bit of water to your brush very little you don't need very much there let's add some warmth at the base I just add a little bit of red against all these cool colors there's some up here there you go just gives it like a quick variation all right okay now we got that covered right so let me go back to see so still a little bit wet still a little bit wet that's what you know these golden uh, open are all about all right so I'm probably gonna downgrade to a smaller brush here uh, let me see I really don't have to but I want to uh, what do I want to use okay let me use uh, 
you know what? Let me go for a flat. I'm gonna use a flat and a fill right here. So now I'm down to a number two flat. Okay. So um, I see I'm gonna have to go a little bit darker on the tree and expand a little bit more and do more darks down here. But I'll work on a tree afterwards. I'm gonna start working on some of these darks down here. And uh, let me see. So let's do ultramarine. red and I really wish I had some burnt umber but anywho there you go just adding some darks here See, I'm going to going around some of these light colors, as you can see there, right? I'm pushing these colors a little bit. There's more darks up here. Just mix that in a little bit with the bottom here. There you go. Alright, so let me see uh, more darks up here as well while I have these darks. And you don't want to press too hard on your brush, okay? Just load up your brush pretty nicely and uh, nice smooth effortless okay. all right so now uh, let me work a little bit more on this tree mix some of this color together add a little bit of sap green to this and you want it why did I use sap green is because this has more of a reddish tone this between the burnt sienna and the yellow ochre has a lot of red in it this green will tone it down make it more of a brownish color but brownish muted color which eventually I'll be able to add highlights to so let me see there you go you see this uh, a little bit of green maybe a little bit of sap green make just enough paint there some of the outlying branches Branches up here as well, which we're gonna incorporate. I'm just varying my colors. And you're like, why, why are you doing that? Well, I'll tell you why. So basically, the initial color that I had in there was a very light color, right? So it allowed me to gauge, to gauge how dark or how light the tree is as a comparison to the sky and everything else. Now, it's going to look different here as soon as I start putting uh, sky holes in here, right? And then... Um, 
I'll be able to better focus like where I want put my highlights and just you know you, you kind of have to you have artistic license to do what you want you can put as many holes as you want or as little as you want or shape the tree however you want you know uh, it's just all about your perception and your description of this tree here so and to demonstrate that let me start putting a little bit of sky holes so let me put there's a nice let me put some nice thick paint here ultramarine blue and just using this mix of colors that I have here yellow ochre all right so watch this so right now we're going to start shaping this tree a little bit more I see like remember to load up your brush really good Again, if your paints are sticking, add more water. Okay, so I see this. You could describe. slowly but it's coming along nonetheless okay so I can see that I have to probably make this tree a little bit darker let me see just use burnt sienna yellow ochre Just adding some limbs where I feel like are needed. I see some darker colors up here. let this settle a little bit actually I lied and subtract wherever you feel like you need okay now let me start working on some of these uh, areas here I see some nice cool blues greenish color Just real quick.
wherever I see these greens, just like without thinking too much, just just plopping them in there, you know. I see some oranges, orange color. finished with the tree yet so let me see let's make some greens just uh, Everything's pretty muted in this painting. defining this hedge here This hedge here is not really that important to me, so I'm letting it like a little bit more in the blurry and let the colors mix together just to make it like, uh, how should I say, uh, I just don't want your eyes to focus over there too much, so I really am not putting it into details. minor minor interpretations here I see some trees in the background here
bushes going on here, maybe a little bit darker to set to delineate the background from the foreground. There you go, just give this a little bit more. Right now I'm working light and dark, light and dark, light and dark to separate the colors here. Okay. I'm going to be working on that tree a little bit towards the end. I really don't want to put too much time in it right now. I just want to focus on all those dark areas that I need to. Let me see. mixing these, blending these edges together here. More contrast between the light blues and dark ones. Make these edges disappear. So you don't know where the edge starts and really where it, it ends. Okay, so now, let me work on some of these greens here. So green. Show this road going back there somewhere. Okay. Now let me start blending the edges of these. And I'm using Prussian blue here. Just blending in. There you go. Just like. Um, not blending the edges, just I guess how what I'm trying to describe is the fact that I'm trying to um, I guess feather the edges in, uh, to tell you the truth. Make a gradient, there you go, that's the word I'm looking for. I, I don't know why I was stuck on the word, but to this some dark 
also like a little roadway here. Show a little path. I'm just like making my own thing here. Okay, let me start working on a tree now. Yellow ochre. Too much red. Yellow. We're gonna see how dark or how light I need to make some of these highlights here, this orange. All right, I see some. using nice and thick paint here and I'm gonna put these branches I know there's more branches than what you see and I'm going to add them in here in a second. Right now I'm just basically trying to work with these colors. So I know there's some... Darker shades. some of these branches here. And I'm just using red, green, since they're complement of each other. Maybe a little bit of blue. Make some dark, dark shadows under some of these leaves here. And when, by doing that, I'm really bringing out the color of the tree here. As you can see, I can better see the highlights, okay, because my colors were too light all the way around. So nothing was standing out, nothing was popping out. So I had to do something. So if, you're, if your highlights are not popping, it's either your surrounding colors are not muted enough or they're not dark enough, okay? So just keep that in mind. So let's start making another dark color. Let me Start defining this tree a little bit more. Let's 
coming along slowly but surely. Start defining the main branches here. And I'm gonna use a smaller brush in a second here. Now I'm just poking holes. Like I did with the sky, I'm doing the same thing with the tree. I'm just poking holes here and there to define some of these tree branches. Although this brush is a little bit too thick for that, I'm just putting the main ones and then work from there. I just did that for contrast. Okay. Switching to a smaller brush here. Prussian blue, red. A little bit of burnt sienna. Okay, so now Start putting branches. And notice I'm not following through all the way on some of these branches. What that does is just shows that there's leaves in front of these branches. Okay? So here I might do this. We're not done once I'm doing once I'm done with these branches. You'll see I'm gonna do something a little extra. And you'll see in a minute what I'm talking about. And I'm not making these branches perfect, just quick description of these branches. Some go down. Okay. I'm going to start putting more sky holes here and there. Actually, uh, hold on. some variations of greens here there you go Darks towards the edges. Okay. okay. Now back to this color here. White, a little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of blue, a little bit of red. More white really thin down my color here 
So I'm going to make more sky holes, but this time with a smaller brush. between these branches to define them even more. And these will darken. Right now they look pretty light. Remember it's acrylic so. Let me see, there's something else I wanted to add. Just add this. Some highlights here. Give it a little bit of light because the the paint that the, not the painting but um, the photo itself was a little bit too garish for me, just a little bit too gray. And now you could refine this as much as you want. You see that you could keep it the way it is or make it more, um, how should I say, you could add on to it more if you'd like, uh, if you feel like you need more detail to it to further describe what you're trying to imply here. Uh, like here, I want to put some more darks here and these bushes to separate, to delineate, show some openings. Let's see. There you go. Just show some work on the form yeah this
There's some bright these trees here. These background trees. There you go. Just added some darks here just to not have all this one homogenous color of um, of muted colors back there. It gives it a little bit more definition, I find. There you go. I mean, I don't think I put that much effort into this, um, into doing this. Actually, you know what? There's one more thing I want to do. This clump of bush here, I just want to... break it down just a little bit there you go. just like that if has some phthalo blue actually let me Since this is in shadow, give it more of a blue, more of a cool color. I'll just make it that, just like that. There you go. And there's some um, muted grass here. And look, I'm not even being too careful. I'm just, just like that. There you go. That was just enough. And if I really want to add a little bit more, I could just add a little English house there in the back. Let's see some of this color here. Let me see. I can probably put put a little bit of blue to that. Make a nice little. English house in the background. It's very muted. Let me put a little bit of yellow ochre. Lots of white. Define this house here a little bit. And we can show that the house is hidden by trees here.
There you go. Little house there in the background. And you know what? Let me add one last thing. More Hansa yellow. Too much. Let's add some highlights in the grass. Let's make it more Let's add highlights. There you go, a little bit countryside. There. Let me see. I'm always going to find something that I want to add. It's like it's never, never stops. Just put an indication of leaves. All right, let me show you the final the difference. So here's the English countryside. Make it your own. So with that, folks, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Um, I'll be happy to respond to your questions. 
Uh, if you have any questions on the materials or techniques that I use in this paintings, feel free, or about the products that I use. I'm pretty prompt about answering questions. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. I love you all. You guys, thank you very much for supporting this channel. And um, I'll see you on the next uh, painting. All right, drop a comment if there's some uh, another particular subject you want to see. Uh, I try to accommodate, you know, as much as I can. I can't always get to your subject, but when it strikes me and when time is available, I will try and do this. So, okay? All right, guys. Love you all. You have a great day. Bless you.